former President Donald Trump says he's finally decided who will be joining him as his VP on the Republican ticket. In my mind, yeah. Do they know? Do they know? Do they know? No, nobody knows. That's right. And with so many of my friends that are political leaders that are really going places, and he is on the list, by the way, and I don't know if he's going to make it, but he's, he's on a list of a few people, right? Not too many people. Would you like to be VP? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, we've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking Trump VP. Right before his campaign rally in Philadelphia that he has made his decision. Not too long before that, he asked Byron Donalds if he wanted a VP while he was in Detroit. I can only hope that Byron Donalds is his pick. According to all the media pundits out there, it's going to be Burgum, it's going to be Rubio, or it's going to be Scott. I hope he does not pick any of those. I want Byron Donalds because I want a pit bull. As Tulsi Gabbard said in a speech months ago, or a couple of months ago, on the PBD podcast, first of all, the person who's gonna be Trump's VP needs to be absolutely loyal. But even more important, they need to be up for the fight of their lives. Because when Trump gets in office in January, they have got to uproot the deep state. And it's gonna be dark, it's gonna be ugly, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be grinding work. And I believe Byron Donalds is just the grinder that Donald Trump needs. We're going to check out some video clips of Byron Donalds to show you why. So without further ado, let's dive right in. I want to ask you about another issue. Just recently, there was this sure. issue of the search warrant for the search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago property. Yeah. And it authorized the use of uh, deadly force for the FBI agents, mm -hmm. standard boilerplate language, but you and others have described it as an assassination attempt on the former president. That's just not true. Why would you say something like that? Well, first of all, my view of it is very simple. You have the FBI going in to do this raid on Mar-a-Lago. This is not like any other raid that they would do. FBI agents who did that raid did not want to do it. They didn't think it was necessary. And this is all politically motivated at the end because right. Merrick Garland but wanted that to happen. The, the Merrick language, Garland wanted the, the scenes, language for which the your raid, network did cover, the language for of the going search, into Mar-a-Lago. Congressman, did they not? with all due I love how he does not let her get a word in edgewise because she's a freaking tool. Abby Phillips is a complete clown. She's as stupid as she is attractive, which is saying something. But this woman is a complete and utter tool of the left. And I love how he does not take her bait. I love how he shuts her down and just keeps going. With respect, the language for the search is standard operating procedure for every operation of that kind that the FBI does. They did the same thing when they searched Joe Biden's house. Yes, but they didn't execute a midnight or 6 a.m. search warrant on Joe Biden's house. They didn't show up unannounced. They let everybody know they were coming. It wasn't a surprise like it was at Mar-a-Lago with the police and the press and the media and the cameras. It wasn't a complete shit show. No, they did it politely. They let everybody know they were coming and they walked in. They could have done the same thing with President Trump, but they didn't. They put President Trump and the Secret Service agents in danger when they busted into Mar-a-Lago. And so it's absolutely right that Byron Donalds and others have said this could have been an assassination attempt because Merrick Garland is off his rocker. I don't know if he was ever on meds, but he gives the appearance that he's off of them. Yes, but I would say so that. So how is that weaponizing? Well, what I would say it, when they searched Joe Biden, Joe, weaponizing well, when the DOJ they Joe himself. Biden's house, there weren't all the networks, from my recollection, with helicopters flying over the beach house in Rehoboth Beach, going to find the classified documents in his garage that he took when he was the vice president and when he was the United States senator, which, the, by the I'm, way, is I'm, a violation of the espionage. Congressman, I'm talking about this. They didn't this, do that. I'm talking about they didn't this conspiracy it. theory. They didn't politicize Congressman, it. Congressman, I'm talking about the conspiracy theory that the FBI was trying to assassinate Trump. Well, let's talk would about. Would you acknowledge that? That is not true. Well, let's talk about what's fact. But, let's, uh, let's talk about what's fact. Just a simple question. What's fact what, is, is it true or false that the FBI Abby, was trying to assassinate Abby. Trump? What's fact that is, language? is that Joe Biden violated the Espionage Act. He did it with impunity. I just want and to Robert know. Robert Hur is not prosecuting him. Congressman, I just want to know that you man. are not meanwhile, responding to a very meanwhile. simple question about. I love it. He just keeps going because she's such an idiot. And her question is a gotcha question that does not deserve his time or attention when there are so many other issues going on. Way to go, Byron Donalds. This is the kind of pit bull that Donald Trump needs at his side. 
a conspiracy theory that you voice. What conspiracy theory? That the FBI, by having on a document that they are authorized to use deadly force, was trying to harm or assassinate former President Trump. That is false. Will you acknowledge that? Can I, can I be very clear with you? Sure. I'm not sure what Merrick Garland is trying to do these exactly. days. So the answer because is it is no. clear that the you Department of Justice that that's, is being that's weaponized against Donald Trump. That is clear. That's pretty... <laughs> I love it. He just keeps going. And he makes this woman look as stupid as she is. Now we're going to check out another clip. We're checking out a couple of more clips. But these are the reasons I think that Byron Donalds would be the best choice for vice president. One, I think he will help Donald Trump solidify even more support within the black community. Obviously, he's a black man, but he's a fighter. And he also understands, I believe, what black families are looking for in terms of school choice, in terms of economic opportunity. I think he's got the policies down. Let's check out a couple more clips. Presidential debate. What should President Trump say on Thursday night? We're going to get some expert opinion. Florida Congressman Byron Donalds and Corey Mills. Gentlemen, thank you very much for doing this. Um, let me begin with you, Byron. Um, where do you want to see Mr. Trump's emphasis on the debate? Larry, good to be with you. The emphasis needs to be this crushing inflation Joe Biden unleashed, the terror at the southern border that Joe Biden unleashed, the foreign policy disasters that Joe Biden unleashed. You're getting the theme, Larry. Joe Biden has been a disaster for America. And when Donald Trump was president, when he was president, the country was in a far better place. That's the theme. That needs to be the direction. Fantastic. I love it. Swift, concise, to the point and just lambasts Biden. That's the kind of person Donald Trump needs at his side. Someone who can easily articulate and boil down the issues to their bare essence. And he's absolutely right about what needs to be said in the debate. Trump would be good to avoid the whole January 6th nonsense, to avoid the 2020 election. He's going to have to talk about the weaponization of the DOJ, but avoid the whole convicted Felon, guilty nonsense, avoid all that. Just go to the heart of the matter that it's a weaponized DOJ, that Joe Biden's a tyrant, that Joe Biden's a disaster, that Joe Biden has destroyed the southern border, Joe Biden has destroyed the economy, Joe Biden has destroyed uh, the, the face of the United States on the world stage. Excellent. And that kind of fighting attitude is what Donald Trump needs. We're going to check out one more. Maybe two more. Let's go. Because I know we're running out of time and I really, really thank you for your time. And I'm really interested in talking to you about this. How the hell are you supporting Donald Trump at this point? At this point? I I'm talking about I'm, I'm talking four counts. I'm talking about four charges, 91 counts. I mean, people are talking about he's going to be, he might, you, you could be in prison running a country from prison for crying out loud. Do I think that's going to happen? Of course, I don't think that's going to happen. But I'm just saying, how at this point could you possibly support Donald Trump? First of all, I'll tell you right now, between him and Joe Biden, this isn't even a question. Joe Biden sucks. He's terrible at the job. And we do have to acknowledge that before COVID-19, despite all the circus and the phony investigations, you know, the Russia collusion thing was phony. That's now come out to be proven. Despite all of the distractions in the circus, he actually did the job as president of the United States. Every demographic group was doing well under Donald Trump. Every demographic group was doing well. Our border was secure. There were no foreign wars that anybody was talking about that we were entangled in. Our country was booming. Energy prices were low. We were energy independent, something that every politician had said that they wanted to do. Donald Trump actually um, was able to make all that stuff happen. Now let's look at the actual charges. Do you mean to tell me that because a president of the United States had classified documents, who, by the way, former presidents still have their security clearance, they still get the daily presidential briefing, that now somehow this is a threat to national security, that is a joke, especially considering the fact that the only way the National Archives could even bring this this charge, or excuse me, the FBI and the okay. Department of Justice could bring this charge, is that the White House counsel, who works for Joe Biden, had to allow it. That's one. Two, what's going on in Georgia? I'm sorry. Flat out wrong. And every candidate who runs is allowed to challenge election results. Every candidate. It's not some RICO charge. That's insane to me. And then when you take the other two charges, the one in New York, that one is just really, really stupid. And then the last one, this January 6th one. Okay. 
They have no hold on. This is important, Stephen. I want to lay this out. Please go ahead. I'm not. They, I'm not they have. They have no. They have nothing that proves that Donald Trump encouraged, organized, structured anything that happened with January 6. This is weaponization of the Justice Department against a political rival, and it's flat out wrong. And here's my example for that. Okay. One of my colleagues, Steve, Steve, Steve Scalise, yep. who was shot at the congressional Steve. baseball practice. The shooter said in his manifesto, the reason he went to shoot up the Republican baseball practice is because Bernie Sanders was saying that the Republicans wanted to take away health care and he felt it was wrong. Are we bringing Bernie Sanders up on charges because Bernie Sanders was using his political speech and it led, and it led wrongfully for some knucklehead to come almost kill Steve Scalise? No, we don't do that. That's not the standard of justice. So just because they're using the justice system in a weaponized fashion doesn't take away Donald Trump's liberty to run for office or to be supportive. Of okay. For well, let me, let me, let me. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. I think Byron Donalds is a phenomenal congressman. You see his, he lambasts people left and right during committee hearings. He doesn't take any grief from idiot reporters like Abby Phillips. He shuts people down when necessary and he can articulate the core issues that are kitchen table issues to the people of the United States, inflation, immigration, crime, the weaponization of government against American citizens. And he does it in an awesome way. And his only black mark against him is the fact that he is a Florida resident. And so he's not going to garner any particular support within a swing state that Trump needs. So when we compare that with some of the other people that are out there, Tim Scott, obviously, is South Carolina. Trump does not even need any assistance in South Carolina either, but at least it's a different state than Florida. Bergham in North Dakota, Trump doesn't need any support there. J.D. Vance in Ohio, Trump doesn't need any support there. But Vance is in the Rust Belt. So that might help possibly with a Michigan or a Wisconsin or a Pennsylvania. So Byron Donalds being in Florida is probably the only bad check against him. But the fact that he is a black American and that he is a pit bull, and that he is, and he talks the way he does. Tim Scott, I think, is a great individual. I think Tim Scott is very soft-spoken. Uh, I think Tim Scott is a very nice guy. When you look at his record, Tim Scott has done some woke rhino stuff, which I don't like. But I think that for this election, Tim Scott would get rolled over by the media. And now, would, would he beat Kamala Harris in a debate? Pfft, hands down, Kamala Harris, if not the stupidest person in the world, one of the top three. I mean, KJP is up there and some others. But Byron Donalds would be a unique individual. I would pay money to see Byron Donalds debate Kamala Harris. That would be epic. That would be an absolute drubbing. But it would be a fun drubbing because Byron Donalds would just steamroll her. And that would be glorious. Byron Donalds needs to be Donald Trump's VP. That's my pitch. That's my take. Obviously, Donald Trump has already picked his guy. I'm hoping that the would you be VP pitch in Detroit was a prelude because I think Byron Donalds is the best choice. I would love a Tulsi Gabbard, but I'm still not sure. I mean, she just flipped, you know, a couple of years ago. She was voting for Bernie Sanders. She actually voted for Biden. Has there, you know, what? So that that worries me. I think she's a patriot. I think she's woken up to the fact that the Democratic Party is evil. But I'm loving Byron Donalds, who has been MAGA, America first, all the way from the get-go. I think he's the choice. Let me know in the comments what you think. Would love to hear from you. Please like, subscribe, share. Let us know how we're doing. Please share this channel with everybody that you know so that we can grow the footprint, so that we can overcome the algorithm. We can get a wider audience because we've got people to reach. We've got a message to get out because we've got a republic to save. And we can do it with people like Donald Trump and Byron Donalds. But we've got to do our part. And that is we've got to donate. We got to volunteer, become a precinct worker, a poll watcher, a precinct chair. We've got to get out in the arena of ideas in our own arena and fight because you never know when someone else is listening. And finally, we've got to go vote. We got to vote early and we got to drag 10 people with us. Let's make it too big to rig, Courageous Army. We can do this because God is good and he is sovereign. Hey man, it'll all be good in the end. It's not yet good. It's not yet the end. Till I catch you next time.